It is, as always, wonderful to be with all of you here on this uh, lovely Sunday morning. Um, you know, I've been pretty busy this past month. There's been a lot of activities going on in the BCA. I've had the opportunity to visit a lot of different places. Um, but before I talk about that trip, I want to talk about this weekend right now. Um, many of us from Sacramento um, were actually helping out at the Placer Buddhist Temples Bazaar this weekend. It's Saturday and Sunday this weekend. I don't know why it's called Placer, because it's in Penryn, huh? I mean, anyway, okay. So um, there, we, we went to go help them, and it was really nice to see our, our, all of our Sacramento peeps over there helping out. And it was wonderful because the Placer folks helped us at our bazaar back in August. So it's just a wonderful exchange that we're all able to go and help each other out and support each other. So it's really, really nice. So just as a reminder, after service today, you can still head up the mountain to Placer and their bazaar is from 11 to 3. So you can um, check it out. And uh, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to show you some pictures actually too. So um, let's see if this is working. Ooh, it works. That's amazing. Okay. So Show you a couple of quick pictures from Placer. Um, as you can see, isn't that a familiar sight? If I didn't tell you that was Placer, you would have thought it was here, huh? It looks just the same. Wherever you go, there are a bunch of people um, all together making food, you know, which is a really wonderful sight. And uh, as you know, this is our this is their first in-person bazaar, also since 2020. So everybody was, it was great to see everybody back in their same little kitchens and countertops and making all this, what is that, spam was to be, right? Uh, making tons of it. I, I think they sold like, uh, what is it like, I think they made like four or five hundred, four hundred boxes or something like that. And those are two pieces. So that's a lot. And then what is that? That's like barazushi, huh? So for those that don't know, it's a seasoned sushi rice, a little maybe homemade tamago that looks like there's some ginger on there. You know, I can't see. There's a monitor in the back of the room. I, I need glasses. I can't. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just can't see. So, um, And of course, they made this wonderful Asian chicken salad, little dressing on the side. So they really did it up over there, right? They, they, they made a lot of food. They did a really great job. So the Sacramento team, you know, we helped out with their tempura booth. Um, maybe not because we're experts, because, but more because that was the most uh, pain booth to run, so they didn't want to run it, so they handed it to us, and we, we gladly took charge of the booth, which is no problem, no problem. Look at this crew of people working. Look at that. We're making tempera on the back, and they got it all laid out, and they're, they're plating everything up, and it was really, really great. They have other things there, too. They have wonderful crafts, you know. They have a little bonsai display, right? Really nice, right? And um, they do a real simple, you know, they, they set up the little uh, uh, easy up, and that's not an easy up, but you know, the covering, and the, so everybody can dine under there. And of course, being at the end of September, the weather is quite temperate, really beautiful day. Um, just a really, really nice event. So, you know, that's the, that was the Placer Buddhist Church. I just wanted to share that with all of you. Um, and also, the other, I mentioned that I've been traveling around a lot. So for those of you that don't know, I work for the Buddhist Churches of America, the BCA, and I am, one of my jobs is I work for the Center for Buddhist Education, and I'm the youth coordinator. So I put on youth events and put on youth retreats and stuff like that. I also get to visit other youth events in other districts. So I took a little trip to Southern California uh, to attend their, it's called the Southern District YBL, the Young Buddhist League Conference. So it's comprised of high school age students. So for those of you that don't know, in Southern California, they have huge numbers of high school YBA youth members. So, that, so big that they can host their own conference. And in the past, they would get like 150 kids there. And this is just right before the pandemic. So now they're kind of coming back into the fold, trying to get everybody involved, which is great, right? So we, we didn't have a quite 150, but there was a really good turnout. So this is all of us registering, you know, same thing. It actually was a little bit uh, drizzly, in, and this is just a couple weeks ago. So that's, that's quite the contrast to our, this is still when we're hitting 100 degree days. So it was really hot over here. And these kids get together in the room. They do little workshops. You know, they do all these great things. And um, it's all the things that we are not able to do when we're online, right, through Zoom, like we've been doing for so many months and years. To be able to just sit in a circle and be together, I know this seems like such a simple, simple thing that you don't even think about, but for me to be in this room with a group of high school kids and, and sit in a circle was, it was just wonderful. It was just such a wonderful feeling to be back in person together. 
And you know, they took their little group photo. As you can see, there's, a, there's still a quite a good turnout you know, for all high school kids. So you know, they do a really great job, and I'm glad they're coming back in person. These are some of the officers of the, uh, I don't know why they made them wear those, but anyway, it's part of the gift. So, OK, the other good thing about going to Southern California is I got a few good buddies over there, so I'm going to show you some food pictures, OK? Uh, my friends took me out to dinner that night, and we went to this real fancy restaurant. So anybody know what that is? Pound cake, huh? No, it is tamago. I heard tamago down here. So that is a, a, it's a tamago yaki. It's a very traditional egg. It's an egg omelet. So it's seasoned with dashi and sugar. Quite delicious, actually. So there's tamago yaki. And then, what's this? Tofu, agedashi tofu. A, a student in the front right here, excellent. Agedashi tofu, it's a deep fried tofu, right? A little cornstarch, special sauce. Everybody knows what this is, right? Chicken karage. It wasn't quite as good as Gordon's chicken karage here, but almost. It was al no, it was quite delicious, so. And then, uh, oh, you're not gonna get this one. This is beef tongue. Yes, crowd reaction for those of you at home. Okay, so <laughs> there's a crowd reaction. And then, oh, mmm, Thai sashimi with a little juzu, little, ooh, that's so good, right? And then we had this wonderful fresh bean sprout salad with taco. Taco is octopus, steamed octopus salad. Mmm, so delicious, very, very nice. Um, the other place that we went to, the other place that I went to is the, so I went all the way south to Southern California, and then I went all the way north to Seattle. So it's the Northwest District Family Conference. Now, this is not just for high school kids. This is a whole family conference. And the reason this activity is so unique and I wanted to share it with you is because we don't really have anything like that here in our district, right, where we have a whole convention where all families come. Usually it's just for the kids, or maybe we just have an adult one. But this is one where everybody's there. Some of you may recognize Reverend Kusunoki there on that uh, right-hand side. He used to be the Lodi minister here, but now he's the Dimban of Seattle. And for those of you that don't know, Reverend Yuki Sugahara, our minister here, he used to be in this district as well. So they're mad at me when I go there because they you stole our minister, they say. And I, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. So what a great convention, right? There's a lot of people here. We're at the Double Tree over there. Um, really, really nice. And it, again, it was so wonderful to be together with other people. And um, it was just really, really nice. They even do, you know, they do workshops all day. We do lectures. And at the end, we have a little banquet, you know, which is nice. So I got to take my daughter with me, Ellie, to the banquet. We got to go to the banquet together, which is really nice. And last food picture, mmm, banquet, right? Ooh, banquet has dessert, yay. So, um, you know, Matt, I don't, I didn't test my video. I hope it's connected to the internet, otherwise this next slide won't work. The highlight of the Northwest District Convention for me, not just the sharing of the Dharma and being together with people, was the ping pong tournament. <laughs> so, they had, I don't know why they did this, but uh, it was super, super fun. So. Um, Luckily for me, I didn't go through all the brackets, okay? They, um, I arrived a little late, so I couldn't sign up from the beginning, so they already had the championship brackets. But I was able to convince them to allow uh, the bishop and myself to be partners to challenge the winners, okay? So, and I don't know if Bishop Arata could play ping pong at all, so um, let's, let's, let's cross our fingers and see if this video works. Does it work? No, boo. Boo, the video doesn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna try this really. Oh, is it working? Oh, is there any sound, Big Matt? Let me try it again. Okay, so it is working. You know I can't see the mouse. Is there a um, knob over here? It doesn't matter. Okay, I'll tell you what the sounds are. And you can see uh, Bishop and I are on this side, right? I didn't take this because I never shoot video in uh, portrait. That's a no-no. <laughs> never shoot video in portrait unless you're on Instagram. You saw the slam, right? You saw the slam? And so remember, after every point, ooh, the people, you know, after every, ooh, that's what everybody was saying. So yeah, like, ooh, look at that. Ooh. Is it, did it restart? I think it restarted. Oh. 
Oh, oh there, there you go. Yeah, add the sound effects. There you go. Good job, everybody. Good job. Because that's what it sounded like. That's, that's actually the sound. So that was so awesome. Um, when else are you going to see the Bishop of the Buddhist Churches of America running around? And, uh, you know, he, he, he got some skills, right? Like Bishop Roddick can move, you know? He was, I was, like, quite impressed. So it, it was interesting, right? It looked like we did really well, right? Like it looked like we were kind of dominating, right? Well, that was a video edit. So, <laughs> so you know, let's, let's, let's take another look, okay? Let's see how this, let's see if this works. You guys keep making the sound effects. Oh, yeah, that's what people are doing. Oh, oh. I know, right? It was a good rally, right? You think we would... Oh, that was me. That was my bad. Yeah. I know, so close. You guys are on the edge of your seats, I know. Everybody's... Look at, we're moving, like... Oh, I think that... Oh, how did he get that? Like, how did he get that shot? Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. I already, I already, in my head, like, when he went down, I went, oh, we got this. And then I, oh, and he got us. So, so um, anyway. Okay, so that's it for those slides. But, <clears throat> so... Isn't it interesting after you watch that first video, right? Didn't it just look like we dominated, like we just crushed them and we had it in the bag? And if I only showed you that first video, that's what you would have thought, right? That reality would have set in and it just soaks in because you saw it with your own eyes. Regardless of whether you were there or not there, you saw it with your own eyes and you created your own conclusion in reality. But if I only showed you the second video, which incidentally was closer to reality because we, we lost. Ugh, it was so close, okay. but. Um, you know, if I only showed you the second video, you would have thought the alternate truth, right? You would have thought a different way based on what you see. So it's so interesting how quickly we can arrive at a conclusion without having any other information. But again, whether we won or whether we lost, the, the takeaway and the part of my message today is the most important thing to realize is that none of this could have even happened, this fun tournament, if we were not all there gathered together. You can't play ping pong on Zoom, right? I mean, well, maybe you can, but... So I had such a deep appreciation, even though we lost, <laughs> but I, I had such a deep appreciation for even being able to be there together, just like we're here together now. And um, even though uh, Ellie and I were all the way up in Seattle in the north, you know, outside of our home temple area, there was such a familiarity and comfort in just being at a, a temple event like this, a Jodo Shinshu event. We didn't really know anybody. Ellie didn't know anybody up north, but just being there with other people, chanting in the opening service, hearing the sutras together, going through the motions together, there was such a familiarity. We felt right at home. No matter where you are, you know, we were looking around, Ellie and I were looking around. Even if you're up north, you look around, there is a version of Reiko Kurohara there, up there, right? Running around making food. There is a version of a Gary Traganza who fixes everything. It, in, no matter where you are, and you look, and I, as I mentioned, I can't see, so as I look and I see BWA ladies, they look like our BWA ladies. They look exactly the same. So again, that wonderful, wonderful familiarity, is that's what it means to be a part of a temple community and a part of a larger community with the BCA. It is a really wonderful thing. And we share this common tradition of Jodo Shinshu. So no matter where we go, we can all come together in a single instant and recognize this similar foundation. So it's really great. And our founder, so Shinnan Shonin, right? Right, Shinnan Shonin. Uh, Shinnan Shonin composed what's called his three main volumes, or wasans, and those are kind of melodic poems that we chant. And in his third volume, there is what's called the sh uh, Shouzo Matsu, wasan. Okay, it's his third volume of his writings. He talks about these three Dharma ages. And this is what our keynote speaker, Reverend Dean Koyama, talked about at this conference. 
So the first Dharma age is while Shinnan was alive, okay? You know we're celebrating next year, we're celebrating the 850th anniversary of Shinnan Shonin's birthday, okay? So he was born in 1173. So that first age is the time when he was alive. And it's like this, we call that, Shinnan Shonin calls it this 500 year period while Shinnan was alive. And that's called the, the, the first Dharma age. It's actually called it's called the age of the right dharma. And the reason he calls it that is because that's when we are closest to the original Shakyamuni Buddha, uh, the, the Buddha's life, right? And that is the time when we are closest to the teachings and we are most connected to it and we're able to learn it and we're actually able to become enlightened because we're so connected to the Buddha. And then Shinnan talks about the second dharma age, which is a thousand years, the next thousand years. So the first 500 years of the Buddha's life and this next thousand years after the Buddha's gone is called the second Dharma age. He, he calls it the age of semblance, okay? You don't have to know all these terms, but just remember second Dharma age. And what he says about this second thousand year period is, we're still kind of close to when the Buddha was alive, but not really close enough. And remember back then it was a lot of oral tradition. So we can still kind of get a grasp of the teachings. We can still kind of look like the right Dharma age, but not quite. Which leads us to the third Dharma age. And this is the next 10,000 year period. And that's the period we're in right now, right? This is our period right now. Shinnan called this third Dharma age the degenerate age of the Dharma. That doesn't sound too great, right? Degenerate age. I guess. This is what Shinnan is writing in his poems, in his wasan. Shinnan was saying, in this third age, we are so kind of distanced and far removed from the original teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha. We're so far away, we're gonna lose our way. So he already predicted this. He goes, we're gonna lose our way. Like, we're gonna know about the teachings, we're gonna kinda get it, we're gonna read about it, but we're gonna lose the essence of what it means. So I want us to think about that as we celebrate Shinnan's, you know, birthday next year, his 850th birthday celebration. I want us to think about his teaching, his wasan that he made. So this is what I believe it means to be. It doesn't mean to lose all hope that we don't have any connection to the Shakyamuni Buddha. Don't lose hope. That's not what it's about. What it means is since our connection is so distant and so far, I think it's up to all of us to carry on this amazing tradition. It's up to all of us. We can't just rely on other people or other things or other teachers. So this Buddhist teaching is a roadmap. It's a roadmap, right, to living a more harmonious and a happier life. But if we don't read the map and if we don't share the map, it's not gonna do any of us any good. And that's the most important part to share, you know. Um, so I encourage all of you to please talk to your ministers Talk to your minister's assistants. We're always out in the courtyard. Um, we're hanging out. Um, they're, they're in the office. If you stop by, you know, um, talk to them. They love talking to you. I'm, I'm speaking on your behalf, but they, they love chit-chatting with you. I know sometimes if you're a guest, they look intimidating because, you know, they're, they're in robes and you feel like it's, it's us and them and the Oneidians separated, but that's not the case at all. This is way more of a lay tradition. Go talk to them. You can talk to them even about sports or television if you want, or movies, right? And start there. But they are so happy to talk to you and share with you. So this is the challenge of this third age of the Dharma, okay? It's up to us. And the other thing I tell you is this. When I say share, because I'm talking about togetherness here. When I say share, I mean it's not just the minister's job. It's not only his job to share the Dharma. It is our job. And I know this is intimidating because some of you think, well, I'm not an expert in the Dharma. Who am I to teach it? We don't teach the Dharma. We just share it. So if you have one thing, you can always share it with somebody else. You don't have to have everything. You don't have to know everything. But you can always share what you have, even if it's just a tiny, tiny little bit. So that's what I want to leave you all with today. I want you to share and be bold. Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. You don't have to be an expert and know every single thing about Buddhism, but you can always share. And why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we share this beautiful tradition that emphasizes togetherness, 
and gratitude and the importance of being together. So anyway, that to me is the true essence of what the Dharma means. You know, it's not about mastering everything and Jodo Shinshu is not a, it's not a, uh, it doesn't emphasize practice. It's not a strenuous, rigorous thing that is unachievable. It is simple. It is life. And so I encourage all of you to, to share that. And I encourage also all of you to remember to be deeply grateful for being together as we are today. Let's not take any day for granted because tomorrow is not guaranteed any of us. So please join me in Gusho. Whether we are surviving natural disasters, war, or even a global shutdown, all of these things show us how much we truly need each other. Money, shelter, work, these are all things that are very necessary for human life. But sharing in the company of others and caring for one another, this is why we have a human life. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu.